Our world. Yes, it's 11, 11, 11. This interesting day. This day where some say is very significant. And we've already been finding out the the significance according to Rastafari revelation for this particular day. What's the reason for this season? Now we're going to get into the complete vision of the messianic kingdom which is contained in the ancient Psalm 71 which in your Bibles is Psalm 72 and Psalm 72 as a whole it forms a complete vision of the Moshiach kingdom the Moshiach's Malkut or Christos's Mengis as far as the Belui Kidan revelation had extended now let's go into the psalm and once again we want to highly recommend those who are able to um, who are able to afford it at this time and we're still working with our brothers and sisters to find ways and means to um, get copies um, even more affordable at more affordable prices but you know education it is priceless education is priceless and, and a good education you understand even in this time is expensive there's a cost for it and we will highly recommend this particular parallel version of the Psalms of David with the Royal Amharic Psalms from the Haile Selassie the first Bible alongside the King James version side by side all right so now we're going to get into this particular psalm, which is Psalm 72, the psalm, rightful psalm for 11, 11, 11. Now, as we mentioned before, 11, 11, 11 is 33. If you look at that, if you want to look at that Masonically, but see, the Masons in the scripture are the builders, but the builders have made an error. What's the error that the builders have made? And who are these builders? Let's speak in, let's speak directly, not in parallel, the parables in that sense. The direct way of assigning an identity to the builders are the so-called Masons and the Freemasons who conspired against the Christ man, against the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, against Haile Selassie I, the last king of kings of Ethiopia, the elect of God. Now, Psalm says that the stone which the builders refuse has become the head of the corner. Now, the head of the corner is not the capstone at the top of the pyramid. No, the cornerstone is the first building block. The first building block. And now, here's where Ethiopia's missing link in history, in our story, and in biblical prophecy comes into further, into further context. Now, let's touch on this psalm. Let's get into this psalm, my brothers and sisters. Besima ab, wa weldu wa menefese kudus, ahadu amlak, mezmur dawit, saba and saba hulet. Sile Solomon. Now, I want to give you the footnote right here. There's two footnotes one from the Amharic side of the ledger and one from the King James Version side of the ledger. The Silla Solomon means concerning, because of, or on the behalf of Solomon. And now on the English side, where it says of Solomon, it says, Li uh, Shalomo, Li Shlomo, Li Shalomo in the Hebrew. Li Shalomo, Li Shlomo is um, Silla Solomon, according to the Ethiopic. And now, Le Shlomo reads the Hebrew that has been variously explained and interpreted as concerning Solomon by the Jewish commentators. For Solomon in the authorized version or the King James Version, and later rendered as of Solomon in the revised versions. The Mark Bible reads concerning Solomon. Here, agreeing with the old Jewish commentaries, this messianic psalm and its theme is best understood as descriptive 
of God's ideal king or the shiyume egezi abheri, the elect of God. Here, the king's status and qualifications as God's representative in the governance of his chosen people are outlined. All right? So verse 1, the first petition. Abetu for the hinale nagusa sit sit kehinemale nagusa lij. Give the king thy judgments, O father, I father, O father of his house, and thy righteousness, said the keh to the king's son, le nagus lij. His a behinna bed said a cum chigreno chinimba for da ye danzen. He shall judge thy people with righteousness, his behin bed said it, and thy poor with judgment, chigreno chinimba for da ye danzen. Terra rochina correbatoch le hisabihis lamena yikabalu. The mountain shall bring peace to the people, and the little hills by righteousness. Le chagrenyocha hisbabet sedeka teferdale. Ye de hochinima le jocha tadnale. He shall judge the poor of the people. He shall save the children of the needy and shall break in pieces the oppressor and shall break in pieces, as Rastafari would say, the downpressor, because they're not up-pressing us. They are down-pressing us. So he, the Moshiach, Christos, Christ in his kingly character, shall judge the poor of the people. He shall save the children of the needy and shall break in pieces the downpressor. They shall fear thee. They shall reverence thee as long as the sun and moon endure throughout all generations. In the Zinaba betach edemesikalai, the midrimalaya in the minat abat abat abata yuardala, he shall come down like rain upon the mown grass as showers that water the earth. Sabbat, verse 7. In his days shall the righteous flourish and abundance of peace so long as the moon endureth. Kabahiris, kabahir deres. He shall have dominion. He shall have dominion also from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. From the river, which river? The river of Ethiopia, which is the river of Egypt, which is the river of Africa, otherwise known as the Nile or in the Ethiopia region, the Gion. From there to the ends of the earth, to this even this western region. Befituma chopia yisegdalu, elato chuma fera yilsalu. They that dwell in the wilderness shall bow before him, and his enemies shall lick the dust. Now, here's something very significant about Psalm 72. Psalm 72. That in verse 9, where it says, They that dwell in the wilderness shall bow before him. Bamarinya, according to the Ethiopic version, says, Befitu, 
in his presence, Ethiopia, Ethiopia, you segdalu. In his presence, Ethiopia shall worship in his presence, which is another key indicator that this psalm has been fulfilled in the person of Haile Selassie the first of Ethiopia of Moa and Besazem Negeda Yehuda. So this is another aspect of Rastafari revelation here in Psalm 72, which links with the 11, 11, 11, which is this particular day. Now, that aspect of the wilderness has been hidden in the King James Version. So make a note of that. Psalm 72 and 9 is speaking of Ethiopia. You understand? Those who dwell in the wilderness shall bow before him. But the word Yisegdalu means bow, but it also means to worship. So the Psalm 68, verse 31, where it says, Princes shall come out of Egypt. Ethiopia. That princes or Mequanet will come out of where? Come out of Egypt. Revelation says that we are in a spiritual Egypt. And what's interesting is where are many Ethiopians in D.C.? D.C., the District of Columbia, is based and was built on an Egyptic base, basis. So it's, it's like a modern or a spiritual Egypt as well as America and as well as our down presses have co-opted an, an Egyptian, an Egyptian, an Egyptian, an Egyptian template, an Egyptian template to what they are doing. So that's also a half of the story that sometimes is not told that needs to be understood in connection. Now, Kutar Asr, verse 10, it says, the kings of Tarshish and of the Isles shall bring presents. The kings of Sheba and Saba shall offer gifts. Bamarinya says the Arab you understand, and the Sabian kings, they shall salute, they shall ijamenashan yakarbalu, they shall they shall raise the hand. Kutarasaraan verse eleven Negestato Hulua Yesegadu Letal Ahzabima Hulua Yegazu Letal Ye all kings shall fall down before him. All nations shall serve him. Chigrenya winna kak emanya ij redati lela winna miskina yadna walina. For he shall deliver the needy when he crieth, the poor also, and him that hath no helper. Le chigrenya na le miskina yiraral. He shall spare the poor and the needy, and shall save the souls of the needy. He shall redeem their soul from deceit, and violence and precious shall their blood be in his sight. Arsu yinoral ka arreba warka yiset utal hulgizem wada arsu yisel yalu zawatarim yabar kutal and he shall live. And to him shall be given the gold of Sheba. Prayer also shall be made for him or to him continually. And daily shall he be praised. Rastafari. 
በመደረውስ ተበተራሮች ላይ መጠጊያ ይሆናል ፍሬውም ካሊባኖ ሰይልቃ ከፍከፍ ይላል እንደ ምደረሳ በከተማ ይበቀላል there shall be an handful of corn in the earth upon the top of the mountains the fruit thereof shall shake like lebanon like libanos and they of the city shall flourish like the grass of the earth verse 17 kut asra sabat simu lezalale ma baruk yihonal kut hayi maskadmo asmu yinoral yemidr ahzab hulu ba'rsu yibarakalum ahzabuhu ya masagnu taala his name shall endure forever his name shall be continued as long as the sun and men shall be blessed in him all nations shall call him blessed ja rastafari kadamawi hayla salase bichawna ta amratna yemiyadarig ye israel la amlaka egezi ab her yibarakam blessed be yahweh the elohim el elohis rael the god of israel who only doeth wondrous things kutara asra zetain verse 19 ye misganaw sim le alamna le zalalam yibarak misganaw ma midrna hulu yimla yihun yihun and blessed be his glorious name abukdus yatabarakano forever and let and make the whole earth be filled with his glory be filled with his shakana his shakina his glory amen and amen and here's kutara haya ye isayalij ye dawita mazmur tafatama the prayers of david the son of jesse are ended or rather are fulfilled are perfected are fulfilled and then we we give a note in our mazmur dawit in our parallel bible Halasalasi and King James Psalm of David and we say at Yehun 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 which says is given here from the hard version of the Psalter the Psalter contained in the Emperor's Bible instead of the former dual the dual amen of Psalm 41 and 13 Yehun in the Amharic is derived from Yekun in the gutters or the ethiopic and essentially interpreted in the same context as the amen in the hebraic which means so be it and let it be in the sense of may it come to pass or happen may it happen now the double amen here is the response of the congregation is the response of the mahibr of the society or of the assembly now refer to the notes given at the end of book 1 now why is this important because this is the end of a book so when it says the prayers you understand the prayers of david the son of jesse are ended it's the end of book 2 so the 11 11 11 and the psalm the rightful psalm according to the ancient calculation is 71 but the rightful psalm calculated is 72 so we we touched on 71 first 
and now we're touching on 72, and 72 is the rightful psalm for this 11, 11, 11. Now, the key link with this rightful psalm, which is very interesting, the key link here is that it's a messianic psalm. This is this is what is this is what is very interesting is that it's a it's a it's a messianic it's a messianic psalm. Let's close this right now. It's a messianic psalm. This is the key this is the key link. It's a messianic psalm. Now, let's just go over what Schofield footnotes. Schofield has some very interesting um footnotes. And we would like to touch on these footnotes once again. Now, this psalm should be studied. This psalm should be studied. And y'all willing, if we have time, if, if, if ones are willing for such, we'll go through a more of a detailed study of this particular psalm. But the footnotes that are given right here in the, in the Schofield uh, Reference Study Bible on page 633, are very interesting because it says that the psalm as a whole it forms a complete vision of the Moshiach's kingdom or the Messiah's kingdom, Christ's kingdom, so far as the Old Testament revelation extended. All the prayers, all David's prayers will find their fruition in the kingdom. In other words, all the prayers that David has prayed and that everyone who has chanted the psalm of David is also praying along with David and singing along with David, David's prayers. And all of David's prayers will find their fruition. They will become fruitful in the kingdom as they are being fruit, fructified in Rastafari, as they've been fructified in the Rastafari revelation. And it, and it has verse uh, 20 where it says the prayers of David, the son of Jesse, are ended, or more correctly, even here it says um, in the marginal notes, literally to be ended in complete answer. Tefetzimah. Tefetzimah is the same thing that Yeshua said when he was on the cross, and he said, it is finished. It is completed. It is perfected. Tefetzimah. Tefetzimah. So, 2 Samuel chapter 23, verses 1 to 4, is given here as the first reference outside of the Psalms, outside of this Psalm. So, we want to go to 2 Samuel 23. 2 Samuel 23, verses 1 to 4. 2 Samuel, let's turn our Bibles to 2 Samuel 23. And we're going to read verses 1 to 4. These are the last words of David. The last words of David. 2 Samuel chapter 23, verses 1 to 4. Now these be the last words of David. David, the son of Esai, or Jesse, said... And the man who was raised up on high, the anointed of the God of Jacob, the anointed of the God of Jacob, the sweet psalmist of Israel said, the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of Yahweh spake by me, and his word was in my tongue. The God of Israel said, Elohe Israel said, the rock of Israel spake to me. He that ruleth over men must be just, ruling in the fear or the reverence of Ha Elohim, Baruch Verse 4, and he shall be as the light or the true illumination of the morning when the sun riseth, even a morning without clouds, as the tender grass springing out of the earth by clear shining after rain. Now these are the verses that were quoted in the footnote for this messianic 11, 11, 11 psalm, Psalm 72. Now, verse 1 
which read, Give the king thy judgments, O God, O Father, Abetu, who is the first Abetuta. The Abetuta means petition. So when we say Abet, Abet is callings, like in the Hebrew, Adonai, Adonai, calling upon him. O Father, I Father, O Father of the house, Abet, Abet, Abet. Give the king thy judgments and thy righteousness, thy siddiq, to the king's son, to the king's son. Now, verse 1, it refers to the investiture of the king's son with the kingdom. So the king's son is invested with the kingdom. And when we say the kingdom, and we're speaking about kingdom, we're not speaking about no fairy tale. We're not speaking about no pie-in-the-sky idea. We're speaking about the real established kingdom of David on the face of the planet Earth, which is none other than the throne of David established in Ethiopia, upon which the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, Haile Selassie I, the last king of kings of Ethiopia, the elect of God, sat upon this throne. Now, we know the connection between Ethiopia and old Israel. We know the connection of Ethiopia with ancient Egypt, and Ethiopia with the very beginning is the first place mentioned even in your Bible called, in the Hebrew, the land of Cush. So this is significant because Ethiopia is that missing link in Bible prophecy, which the Gentiles, the Goyim, have suppressed this, have lied and blasphemed against it, and have hoodwinked and be bewildered and bamboozled and deceived many um, nominal Christians into disbelieving and turning away from. But you're seeing all the other signs of God's prophecy and God's word. And if you study the Bible, you will know that along with the other signs that we are witnessing, there must be the sign and the revelation of the kingdom of David and Christ in his kingly character. And that has only been fulfilled in and through Kedamawi Haile Selassie. And the revelation is still revealing. Now, of which investiture, the formal description is given now, they say, in Daniel chapter 7 verses 13 to 14. So let's turn our Bibles to Daniel chapter 7. Let's go to Daniel, Daniel chapter 7. See, this is how we study and show ourselves approved and rightly divide the word. Our world, how we rightly divide the word. Study like the Bereans. The Bereans, they were noble. What made them noble? What was their nobility? That they heard the preaching of the apostles, but they studied daily the scriptures to see whether these things were so. So that example is an example for us, brothers and sisters, in this very time. So now you're there in Daniel, Daniel chapter 7, verses 13 to 14. So in Daniel chapter 7, verses 13 to 14, in the Schofield, there's a, there's a subscription that says, The scene in heaven before the coming of the Son of Man in verses 9 to 12. Now here's verse 13 and 14, which reads, I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man, one who was like the Son of Man. It didn't say that this one was the Son of Man. So some would say the Son of Man is Jesus Christ, Yeshua, Yehoshua, HaMoshiach, right? That that is the Son of Man. But here it's saying that one who is like the Son of Man. And what is very, some may say, uncanny is that when you look at the oldest and most authentic pictures and, 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 and picture representation of Jesus Christ, especially in our Ethiopic tradition and also in other traditions, you will see this resemblance to Haile Selassie I, to Ketamawi Haile Selassie. That is interesting, you understand? And that is also a revelation because here it says that one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and 
came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. They brought him near before him. So we're seeing there are different persons and personalities being represented in this scene. Now, what's interesting about this psalm and the footnote here in the Schofield is that the next uh, um, uh, scripture and, and, and reference quote is Revelation chapter 5, verses 5 to 10. And we're going to touch on that, but let's, let's go to verse 14 in Daniel chapter 7. It says, And there was given him dominion. There was given to him, so this one who was brought near, this one who was like the Son of Man, came with the clouds of heaven and came to the ancient days, and they brought him near before him. And they brought him near before him, and there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom and all people, nations, languages should serve him. And his dominion is an everlasting dominion or is an eternal dominion. So don't believe the lie when one says that his imperial majesty is not still ruling. You understand? They just wanted the careless Ethiopians wanted a different form of government for themselves. But that was too a fulfillment of biblical prophecy. That's that that right there is a beautiful sublime as it may be, but it's a direct reference to biblical prophecy, the events in Ethiopia. And the and the connection with world prophecy is really very interesting. It's amazing that they were able to suppress this so long. But many who have been studying for themselves have been picking up various threads of this on their own. And hopefully this 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 fullness can be preached by all of us in all of the world for a witness. See, this is, this is the role and responsibility that the true sons and daughters of God have, to be a witness, you understand, to the truth of the Scripture, of the Bible, as well as the revelations, you understand, that have been revealed even in our time. And the revelation in this time is the Aras Teferi revelation, the revelation of the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, of Haile Selassie I the last king of kings of Ethiopia, the elect of God, the siyuma egazi abeher lotu subhat, to him be the praise. So it says that his dominion is an everlasting or eternal dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. His imperial majesty's kingdom has not been destroyed, brothers and sisters. Some careless Ethiopians and, and other Gentiles and, and antichrists may want to believe that, want to imagine that were the case, but the reality is I and I. The reality is the global, the global span of Rastafari sons and daughters, you understand, sisters, and brothers. That, that's, that's the reality, because right here it says that to him was given dominion, glory, and a kingdom. This is the Davidic Solomonic kingdom of the king of kings, and all people, and all people, this is why you have Rastafari in all nations, of all nationalities, of all peoples, nations, all languages too, all languages to serve him, to serve him in the end of the Gentile times. This is what the end times is about. It's not the end times for the children of God, brothers and sisters. It's the end time for the Gentile world powers and the, the, the church age also is ending. The church age is also ending because they were only telling the Christians half of the story, and they were given more than 40 years to correct their error. And still there is a grace, and still there is a grace. Now here, there's, there's, a, there's a footnote next to um, uh, him in verse 14, and it says Daniel chapter uh, seven, 
verse 13 and 14 is identical with Revelation 1, 5, verses 1 to 7. So they're telling us right here in the Schofield uh, reference Bible that Daniel chapter 7, verses 13 and 14 is identical with Revelation chapter 5, verses 1 to 7, and antedates the fulfillment of Daniel 2, verses 34 and 35. So, so hold on for a moment. Daniel chapter 2, let, let's go there. Let's go to Daniel chapter 2. Daniel chapter 2, verse 34 and 35 says what? It says, Thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay, and break them in pieces. This is the end of the Gentile times, my brothers and sisters. This is the prophecy. And, and then it says, Was the iron and clay, the brass, the silver, and gold broken to pieces together and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floor, and the wind carried them away, that no place was found for them. And the stone that smote the image, the Babylonian end time image, the so-called counterfeit New World Order image, became a great mountain. The stone that smote that image became a great mountain. That means a government. Mountain is symbolic in the scripture for a government, my brothers and sisters, for a government or a kingdom, and, the whole, and, and filled the whole earth and filled the whole earth. Then it tells us in verse 36 that this is the dream. This is the dream, and we will tell the interpretation thereof before the king. So now there's that dream, and there's that interpretation. Now, let us continue with this footnote here. Let's go back to Daniel chapter 7, the footnote here. So it's telling us that Daniel chapter 7, verses 13 and 14 is identical with Revelation chapter 5, verses 1 to 7. It's on that Daniel chapter 7, verses 13 and 14, and the and Johannes Arai, or Revelation chapter 5, verses 1 to 7, describe the investiture of the Son of Man and the Son of David with the kingdom authority. So there's an investiture here with the kingdom authority or the mengist uh, sultan or sultane. All right? While Daniel chapter 2 verses 34 and 35, what does this describe? It describes the crushing blow. Now, some have thought this to be the Armageddon is that crushing blow. Revelation chapter 16, verses 14, and the Scofield has some references there, which destroy Gentile world power. I mean, this is, this is right here in, in the footnote. So, so the Gentile world, what is the Gentile world power? See, if we thought to think on this and put this into perspective, the Gentile world power is the prevailing world system the world system today, the system that they lie to you and tell you is too big to fail, but it's failing. Babylon is fallen, is fallen. We would have healed Babylon, Jeremiah says, but she would not. You know, say we could have healed Babylon, but see, they don't take I and I word seriously. They don't take the teachings of his majesty seriously. They don't take the good news of the king of kings and his Christ seriously, and that is their own undoing. You understand? Know and that is their own error because they don't seek to make their wills obedient to good influences. They seek to do what they will. You understand? Know Therefore, all nations that forget God are turned into Sheol, are turned into the anti repatriation state, are turned into hell, my brothers and sisters. And this is what we're witnessing right now the destruction of the Gentile world power that can also be described as white supremacy or the Anglo-American, the Anglo-European hegemony, you know, saying the so-called rulership of the world scene. And the world scene is being ruled today by white people or by Europeans. Now, some would say, oh, that's being racist. You're being immature. You're being silly. What is the Gentile world power? It's very clear, it's very specific, the Gentile world power. 
You understand? Is on one side, and the Ethiopian Hebrew king of the king of kings, the kingdom of the king of kings, is on the opposite side. So it says, thus clearing the way for the actual setting up of the kingdom of heaven. So when the Gentile world powers are destroyed, that is what clears the way. This is what clears the way now. So what we're witnessing from 11, 11, 11, you understand, to 12, 12, 12, in that sense is a continual clearing away, a destruction of the Gentile world powers and the clearing of the way for the actual, the actual setting up of the kingdom of heaven or the Mengista Samayat the Mengista Semayat, the kingdom of the heavens. So what, what are we doing? We are preparing. We are studying. You know, saying we are disseminating this truth, and hopefully you are fellowshipping with us to also study, to also where you can and where it's receptible, disseminate this truth. Post these videos up, my brothers and sisters. You understand? If you find, if, if, if the Holy Spirit, you understand, you're able to receive that spirit and and. And, and, and the Holy Spirit directs you to do so, my brothers and sisters, the I, them, have I and I permission. We need to get the word out or start your own videos and, 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 and teach this and, and minister this. This is what it says, that everywhere the word is preached and then the end comes. But this gospel must be preached in all of the world and then the end will come. They don't want the good news preached the true good news of the King of Kings and his Christ, because where the good news of the King of Kings and his Christ is not preached, they think they can prolong, you know what I'm saying, their illegal, unjust, and unrighteous uh, uh, pressing, down pressing, you know what I'm saying, of the poor and the needy. Of the, you, you heard the Psalms. The Psalms is all about the poor and the needy. Where I mean, look around the world today. Look, look at the Wall Street protests and other places. Now some people are beginning beginning to feel those first pangs, you understand, of the global famine. They're beginning to, to, to see the economics crash. All of the, all, all of the secrets are be, being exposed concerning this evil, you understand, this evil system, this evil world, you understand, this evil world system. People say men run the world. Then the, the girls, you understand, try to fire back and say, women run the world. Listen, some people say white people what, uh, run the world. Some people say China's run the world. No, 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 no. Satan, the god of this world, is the devil. You understand, the god of this world system. True, there may be different faces, you understand, different front, front, front men or front women. You understand, but the principles of this world system are not the principles of the God and Father of our Black Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That means that it is inherently and by its own rebellious nature, kufu. It's evil. You know what I'm saying? This is why the Bible says that we are in the world, but we are not of the world. We are in the world, but not of the world. So we're getting a clearing away of the actual setting up of the kingdom of the heavens, the Mengista Semayat. Now, Daniel 2, 34 and 35, and Revelation 19, verses 19 to 21, is telling us are the same, the same event, are the same event. So we have the same event being shown to us, being shown to us here, you understand, where we have two opposing systems, the kingdom of the king of kings, you understand, and, and Daniel, it, it needs to be noted, is where the vision of the end of Gentile world dominion, the end of Gentile world dominion um, is, is, is shown, this vision is shown, and if you have if you have spiritual eyes to see and ears to hear, you will be able to recognize what we are hearing and witnessing in this time, you understand, is a continual acceleration of that process, a continual acceleration of that process. And now it's 11, 11, 11. Now, let us go let us go forward. Let us go forward. Because we're coming to that time when the Kedusan, the Kedusan 
of the Lul, of the sovereign, are going to take the Mengis, and we're going to possess the Mengis. We're going to possess the kingdom, the Mengis, forever, even forever and ever and ever. Yovas, that's, that's the reality. This is the reality we must prepare our hearts and minds for, because 11, 11, 11 has to do with consciousness and reality when you start to study it from the, the metaphysical numerical basis. And we're going to try to touch on some of the metaphysical numer numerical basis of 11, 11, 11. You understand? So the next aspect is that we're going to go to Revelation. Let's go to Revelation chapter 5. Let's go to Revelation chapter 5. This is the next quote. So we have to go up and down, you understand, and to and fro in the scriptures, you understand, to come to the fulfillment of what it's saying. So that when we look and see and hear, we will be able to recognize what's really going on. Now, Revelation, Revelation. Uh, reveals the truth, Revelation 5, 5 to 10. So in Revelation chapter 5, verse 5 to 10, all right? It says, um, Christ in his kingly character. This is what this particular psalm is about, Christ in his kingly character. Isaiah chapter chapter 2, verse 1, Jeremiah, or uh, actually uh, Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1, Jeremiah 23, verse 5, Luke chapter 1, verse 32, and verse 33, 33, um, opens the book. This is where Christ and his kingly character opens the book. And one of the elders, verse 5, one of the elders saith to me, Weep not, behold, Moa and is the Immanagedah Yehuda, the conquering lion or the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, the what of David? The root of of David hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and I looked, and I saw, and lo, look, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, in the midst of the elders stood a lamb, as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of Elohim, the seven spirits of the true God, sent forth into all the earth. Verse 7. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. So that lamb came and took what? And took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. Now here's the living creatures and the elders. They worship because of redemption. You understand? So the black redemption, the redemption song. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints, which are the prayers of the Kedusan, the Kedus, the Kedusan, the holy ones. And they sung a new song. Notice this. They sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seven the, the seals thereof for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us thou hast redeemed I and I to God to Jah by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation and has made us has made I and I to our God to I and I Jah Rastafari kings and priests, or a kingdom, a kingdom of the priesthood, and we, and I and I, shall reign, I and I shall rule on earth. So it's their end times, but it's our preparation time. You understand? It's our preparation time. So uh, get ready, my brothers and sisters. Once again, Shalom Rastafari.